I'm officially on summer break. And that means that I've hyped up for a little while now. That new things are coming. And it starts on episode 15 of Shoes Views. Because guess what? You're not going to miss it. Because for the first time, a series will be going down on Shoes Views. And that will involve Powerhouse Hoops. We've come together and we're going to have a four episode series regarding all kinds of stuff from four of the top Powerhouse Hoops players. You're not going to miss it. Today is Oso's first person on, and you're not going to miss it. It's a great one. Along with that, I'm going to give you guys my finals preview, my breakdown of the Toronto Raptors, Golden State Warriors, the top 15 players playing in the NBA Finals, and a lot more. Stay tuned. Oh, and of course, how can I forget? Shoe Zone. You're not going to miss it. Two crazy stats I'm going to talk about and break down for you guys. Stay tuned. It's going to be a great episode today on this great Friday. How's everyone doing today? Good morning, good afternoon, or good night. I'm so happy you guys could be joining me no matter what time of day it is. With that being said, I hope that everyone has had an incredible week and is ready for the start of a fabulous, blessed weekend ahead. And I hope that everyone gets used to this and enjoys this Friday thing, because from now on, Shoes Views will be going on every Friday, along with every Monday, but I just had to add on. Without further ado, though, I am your host, Zach Shoes Shoemaker, and I'm home in Arizona, and I'm extremely excited to get ready to start this powerhouse series with Shoes Views with one of the top guys in the state in OSA. You're not going to miss it. Along with that, though, I'll be bringing you guys my opinions and my takes on the NBA Finals. It's going to be a great preview that you're not going to miss. That being said, let's get right into it. These Toronto Raptors have impressed me so much of this postseason. I knew they were winning the first series. I knew they were winning the second. Nor do I think they're beating Giannis on Kumpo. But Kawhi Leonard has truly solidified himself as a top five player in the NBA, no debate. Kawhi Leonard is something special. Kawhi Leonard is someone that needs respect from everyone. He might not have the freakish body as Ben Simmons, as Giannis on Kumpo. But he is special. These are my respect, and I hope he earns everyone's. Point is, they're in the NBA Finals now. As much as I love Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady, they couldn't do it. DeMar DeRozan, an incredible all-time great for Toronto Raptor. Probably will make the Hall of Fame. He couldn't do it. But this man can. Ter- Kawhi Leonard is something special, and he's put Ka- Toronto on the back of his shoulders and been insane. You also know what happened this past year? This past season, Toronto destroyed Golden State 2-0 in the series in both games. Now, as for the NBA, they had to go speak to the Toronto Raptors about Drake. I think it's ridiculous. Come on. This is this is incredible. People are honestly watching. Some people are watching these finals to watch Drake. They're watching it to see the fans. Because this fans is like a college atmosphere. Drake said it perfectly. This is like a college basketball atmosphere that you do not want to compete with. It is incredible what they're doing. It is fun and excitement. I, I couldn't be happier about it. It is so much fun watching this bench and the way that this, this entire city is electrified. It's incredible. And they're not going to turn it down. They all saw tonight. Last night, Drake was wearing a Dell Curry jersey, signed by Dell Curry, Toronto Raptors Dell Curry jersey. Going to be much better than that. He didn't turn it down in order to care. OJ on movie may return throughout the finals, but the way Toronto's playing, they might not need him. But if he returns, it's big time. Someone else might be returning, I'll get into that in a little bit. But it's one of the X factors for this team. We learned last night was not Kyle Lowry. I thought Kyle Lowry was the guy. When he played good, they won without. No. But you want to know when they were the peak. Fred Van Vliet in his first 15 games of the playoffs, including the series against Orlando, including the series against Philadelphia, and the first couple games against Milwaukee, he had 60 points. 60 points. That's not a lot. In fact, I was only averaging 4 points per game. You want something crazy, though? Past 4 games, he's increased that by almost... He's got he's got about 16 points a game. 12 more points per game, and that's the X Factor right there. Fred Van Vliet's an undrafted player out of Wichita State. I've loved him ever since his days at Wichita State with him, Clean Anthony Early. They've obviously had Landry Shemmett later now. Back in the day when they had they had um, Ron Baker, they had a whole bunch of good guys. Great squad, loved them. Representing Kansas City, huge Cinderella story. Point he came to the NBA, he's balling. He's playing at a high level and the elite sixth man in the NBA right now in the playoffs. I love Fred Van Vliet. Great medium in the Summer League last year. But he's a great person and a huge big-time player. Now, big props. Once again, go back to Kawhi. 
Doc Rivers said Kawhi is the most like MJ that we've ever seen. More like MJ and Kobe than LeBron. And a lot of those guys. Not sure the guy you think of when it comes to that. My opinion, I think of him as maybe a better or the same kind of Scotty as Scotty Pippen. But MJ. MJ did at least into the finals. Scotty Pippen never did it by himself. There's a debate, and we really need to take Kawhi seriously now. Kawhi has earned everyone. He should have earned everyone's respect by now. Now we also learned more details. Kawhi's uncle spoke about this. Why he demanded a trade from the San Antonio Spurs. He didn't believe Kawhi couldn't play. We had to move on. So Spurs really didn't believe that Kawhi couldn't play, which makes me think, was he hurt or was he not? You also got to think, Kawhi was rested and out so many games this year, but look at him. He's fine. Maybe Spurs just didn't want to adapt to the new era, which is fine. It didn't work out. They lost on Kawhi, though. End of the day, it is business, and it was done. And they came with nothing to change that, and what went down. Because Kawhi Leonard is now a member of Toronto Raptors, leading him to the NBA Finals, putting the city of Toronto, no, the country of Canada, on his back, and it is a show that I cannot miss. This is incredible action. This show, and this playoffs, and this series, this NBA Finals, is like a show that you're never going to want to miss. It is a reality TV show that just keeps getting better. Drake keeps getting better, the actors keep getting better, the games and the players keep getting better. It is incredible to watch. Other news about Nick Nurse. He will, coach, he will be leading Team Canada in the 2019 FIBA Basketball World Cup. Props to him. Big time. I hope Andrew Wiggins is playing on that. His Canada has quite some studs playing for Team Canada. I was born in Canada. They've been playing. Well, they, are, they, are they on Team USA level? No. But are they a very, very, very good team? You're dang right he is. And it's going to be a great squad to see what he does, because look at what he's done with Toronto. I'd love to see what he does with some of these Canadian guys. Coming up next, the Powerhouse Series with Shoes View starts off with a Sassuolo Gallo, one of the top players that plays for Desert Vista, and you're not going to miss what he has to say. Trust me, stay tuned. It's going to be worth it. I'm extremely excited to start off the Powerhouse Series with one of the, their top guys in a Sassuolo Gallo. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Not too bad. So let's talk about the first thing then. Just yesterday, you got offered by St. Mary. How was that feeling? Do you like the offer? Talk about it. It was really good. I went. I took an official visit this weekend there, and uh, I had a really good time. And I hung out with the players, and I really liked the team there. That's awesome. So obviously now you've got quite a bit of offers. I mean, they keep coming in kind of a lot more consistent than were before. So what are some like your top ones you have right now that you really like? Um, I like Stanford, Vanderbilt, um, USC, St. Mary's. I think those are probably the top ones right now. Okay. So when you your first offer is Montana, right? Yes. How was it the day when you first got your offer? Oh, it, it was actually funny because when he offered or when the coach from Montana offered me, I wasn't sure if it was an offer or not. So. <laughs> I, I had to text one of my other coaches, and then he asked him, and he told me I got I got it. So I was I was extremely excited. So it was good. That's awesome. How long ago was that? That was the the last summer before my before last club season. Okay, so basically, then within the last year, you basically compiled like a ton of offers. Then yeah, that's awesome. So do you have a dream offer you kind of go your goal would be to play for that college or something? Not really. I'm just looking for a good fit with a good coaching staff and good players that a program that likes to win and wants to get better. So I don't really have a dream college, but just that fits those descriptions. No doubt, that's awesome. So when you first chose to play for Powerhouse, what made you decide to want to play with them and all that? Well, I. What drew me to them was one one of my coaches from Desert Vista, Coach Pat. He told me that it was a good opportunity, and two, they have you you get a lot of exposure playing for a powerhouse. You play in front of a lot of coaches, and that's something that I thought would be good for my recruitment. So I chose to play with them. Mm -hmm, no doubt. So what would you say? How do you like playing with them this season? All of them. We have a lot of fun. We play hard and work hard. So. It's been good so far. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So why did you originally choose to go to Desert Vista? Well, my sister went there for for dance. And so I just went there because it was easy for my mom to 
take us both to school. So that's that was it. Mm-hmm. Were there any of the options you're considering? It was either going to be uh, DV, Mount Point, or Corona. Okay. And then you just said, because yeah. Desert you just wanted to go there because it helped your family out. It was the best situation that way. Yeah. That's cool. So then recently, I know my brother's played and knows a couple, like Coach Crump and all of them. So what would you say is one of your favorite parts about playing with Coach Crump? Well, he's a very uh, he's a very passionate coach, and he he just really wants us to get better and work hard. So he pushes us hard, but it's just because he wants us to be really good. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So have you considered going to any other prep schools or charter school or something? Not really. Some a lot of people have asked me about that, but I'm just kind of focused on winning a ring for next year. So. We'll, we'll see what happens, but not right now, no. All right. So, what I'm guessing the expectations for next year is to win a state championship with Desert Vista? Yeah, definitely. Cool. So, what would be some things you think then, like, as a team you guys could improve on from last year to be able to reach that point? I think it was just really experience. We had a really young team last year. We had a sophomore a f- and two freshmen starting for some of the season. So, it's just we needed to just grow as a team and just – get more experience together but uh, i mean we're just maturing and getting better as a team so we should be good that's awesome so i was also talking to justin vargas a little bit he was talking about how your grades are super high as well so i mean i think you have a 4.4 gpa right 4.7 4.7 wow so how much of like your how much focus do you put into grades and what's the importance of grades for you it's really important because uh it it has just opened a lot of doors for me that that wouldn't be there if I didn't have good grades. So it helps me a lot. Helps me a lot in basketball, and also I just like getting good grades. So mm-hmm. it's good on both sides. That's awesome. So when did you first originally start playing basketball? I well, I didn't play. My first club season was my freshman year, and I didn't really play until like seventh or eighth grade. But my dad kind of trained me. When I was younger, though. Okay. So when did you first get your passion for loving basketball? Like, this is what you really wanted to do? Well, i would known it from a young age, but my dad just didn't really want me to play basketball. So my school first and then play basketball later. So it started so late. Gotcha. So when you look at players, like, who's someone that you really model a game after? Is it rather a college player, an NBA, or a past player, or someone? Who do you model a game around? I, I think – Probably LeBron because just because of the way he can see the court and make his team better, that's something that I really like to do. So, probably yeah, probably. LeBron. Okay, so that's something. I mean, I know I watched you a few times now. So, I mean, you kind of can run a forwards, do center. I mean, you can really run almost all the positions. But what's something like? Is there really necessarily a position that you prefer running, or you you think your best position at? Yeah, I prefer playing on the perimeter. So so. What's one thing that you know you could really improve on to make take your game to a whole other level? Probably just being just being a little bit more selfish and just staying aggressive the whole game because sometimes I get a little bit passive because I am extremely unselfish, but just taking the game into my hand into my own hands a little bit more. Absolutely, Absolutely. that's awesome. I mean, cause I know people say, I mean, you you have like all the tools already built. I mean, everyone's always says to talk about like your potential is super high. And you have the, I mean, the sky's the limit for you. I mean, so basically, I mean, once I mean, once everything comes together, I mean, it could be super special. Mm-hmm, definitely. So, what would you say is one of your favorite highlight plays? Your favorite plays you've ever done in a game? I would say probably either I I dunked on someone last club season. I don't know if there's a video of it, but I dunked on someone last club season. That was pretty good. Or either that or the Mount Point game from this year. I played. I have some highlights in that right, game. I heard that game was really awesome. Yeah, it was, it was a good mm-hmm. game. So if there's one player that would be a dream player to team up with, who would it be? I mean, you could probably actually give me your your favorite high school player and your favorite pro player you'd want to team up with. Yeah, I really liked playing with uh, Dalen and Jalen Anderson my freshman year, and I like playing with Dre Henry on my team right now. So probably those two. All right, say. cool. Is there an NBA player you dream to play with? Probably LeBron. Or, or Damian Lillard, because he's my favorite player. So who would you say would be the best player you've ever played with? This point guard named Elijah Gamage. He, he goes to ASU. He's he's on the football team. But he was the best defender I've ever played in my whole life. So he was really good to play with. And then 
this other kid named Tyreek Chambers, who he was really hard to guard. So probably those two, I would okay. say. So who would you say then would be your best player you've ever played against? I would say my freshman year I played against – well, I didn't play that much, but we played against P.J. Washington and Finley Pratt, and he had like 35 and a triple-double. So. <laughs> wow. So who do you say is some of the most underrated players in the state? Because I know I've had, I've had quite a few players from the state that's on the podcast, and all. I mean, there's so many great players out there constantly getting D1 scholarships because, I mean, Arizona basketball is constantly on the rise. But who would you say are some of the most underrated mm-hmm. players in your opinion? I would definitely say – well, I already mentioned both of them before, but Jalen Anderson and uh, Dre Henry from Mount Point, those two are extremely good players that their recruitment hasn't uh, blown up like it should have, in my opinion, but they're extremely underrated and extremely good players. Absolutely. I mean, DeAndre, he's going to be on the podcast next during the Powerhouse series. So, I mean, there's a lot of good players within Powerhouse and just within the state too. Yeah. So then well, who would you say – now talking about some NBA stuff – who would you say is your favorite NBA team? Uh, the Trailblazers. How, is there a reason why? Or Well, my mom went to Oregon for a couple semesters, and I I just like Oregon, and I like Damian Lillard. So. Gotcha. Yeah. So who would you say – was there a favorite college growing up that you really loved watching, or has it just kind of been neutral your whole life? It's been neutral, but I really liked watching Syracuse just because they had – they had long, athletic players like me, so, and I just like that that two three zone that they played. I used to like it when I was a kid, but yeah, probably Syracuse. All right. So obviously the NBA finals are starting on Friday. Who would you say is going to win the NBA finals? <laughs> I'm not really sure if that's a real question, <laughs> but the Warriors. Mm-hmm. Same. So who do you think is going to be the finals MVP then? Probably Steph. He's been playing really, really well, and I'm not sure if. Uh, Katie's going to be back for the start of the final, so probably Steph. Mm, no doubt. So something I just added in, too. So I mean, obviously this summer's going to be a big free agency class, but where would you say Kate, Kevin Durant's going to sign? Hopefully he signs with either the Knicks or the Clippers, but I just have a feeling he might stay. But hopefully he signs with the Knicks or the Clippers. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the best fits for him, I mean, between I think it's between Knicks, Clippers, and Brooklyn. I mean, all three of them places he'll – they're big markets where he can shine, and if he wins a ring there, I mean, he'll be iconic forever. Yeah, definitely. And then two more guys then. So where do you think Kawhi will go or stay? Mm, that's a good question. I think Kawhi I, – I don't think he's going to stay, but I think maybe the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Either the Lakers or Clippers, hopefully. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, Kawhi – I mean, it's, I mean, if they didn't make the final, I think it would have been over already in terms of him where he's going to go. But, I mean, it's going to be interesting. It'd be hard to turn down Toronto. I mean, it's, they've been fabulous for him. I mean, he's been incredible there. But I just think it'd be hard to not go to one of the L.A. teams. Yeah. And then the final guy is Kyrie. Where do you think he's going to go? Kyrie, uh, I would love to see him team up with LeBron again. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure if that will happen. But, honestly, I have no clue where he's going. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's... Maybe one, maybe the Knicks, though. Yeah. I mean, him and Kawhi are both two guys that really no one ever can get an idea of what they want. I mean, they kind of change their mind every other week. It's a new alert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, the final thing we can talk about then would be... So, obviously, instead of your Portland Trailblazers fan, what would be something you want to see them improve on or add a piece or what? Um. Well, I feel like they have all the pieces and... It's just it just really depends on if the Warriors break up because I feel like they have all the pieces to be the best team in the West if the Warriors are left. But until then, I don't think anything is going to change. Yeah, I mean, it would have been interesting to see what would happen if Nurkic was playing. But I mean, I can't. I I agree with the yeah. majority of things Damian says, but it's kind of I don't think if just him playing would be able to beat the Warriors and get them four wins. But yeah, probably not. But. So I always like to talk a little bit about God and all any and on my interviews and podcasts. So what would you say would be the best way and the most God the best way you've seen God helps you throughout your career so far? Well, usually before before almost every game, I I like to pray. That helps me a lot. Just calm down and just get ready for the game. But he also God has just helped me stay humble. I would say it's probably the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. No doubt. I mean. Do whatever you do. I mean, you always have to keep God first. And I mean, he clearly shows everyone 
the right way and helps them in whatever way they need at the right time in his time. Yeah. But it's truly been a pleasure having you on here today. And I can't wait to see what God brings you in the future and where you end up committing. Best of luck. Thank you so much. No problem. God bless. Coming up next, the team going for the three-peat. The team going to win it all. The most dominant, fearded team in the entire NBA. What do I have to say about them? Will they be the team that's going to defeat the Toronto Raptors in the NBA Finals? Stay tuned, because I have some thoughts to say, and even something about Kevin Durant that you're not going to miss. Stay tuned, everyone. All right, now, Golden State's going to be favored to win. Of course they are. Will they win? Here's what's going to happen. Golden State will go down 2-0. They're going to head back to Oracle down 2-0. At that point in time, magically and quickly, Kevin Durant's injury will heal up. And he'll be on that court point. You know what? It might even be after game 3, when they're down 0-3. And you know what's going to happen? Kevin Durant's going to walk on that court. Kevin Durant's going to show the world who he is. On a whole other level, because some people are still saying it's a debate between Kevin Durant, between Giannis, between LeBron. You know what's going to happen? He's going to pull back, win four straight games. You heard me. Kevin Durant's going to go in there. He's going to go 4 2. He's going to go 4 3. And he's going to end up winning the NBA Finals. His injury's going to magically heal up. Yes, he will. All of a sudden, Kevin Durant will be healed, and Kevin Durant will be playing. And they will win the NBA Finals, and he will be your Finals MVP. Yes, Curry favored to win the Finals MVP right now. And if right now, yes, he probably will if they can win it. Kevin Durant's going to go out there. He's going to show the world he is the best player in the NBA and significant, significantly show everyone in the world that is what's up. There's not going to be a debate. He's going to be something that maybe has never been done before, and it's going to be something special. Following that move, he's going to leave and announce that he's not returning as a member of the Golden State Warriors Showing that they are have a weak, they do have a weakness. It's not just that they're great just because Kevin Durant's gone. Kevin Durant will then go to his one of his three big market teams, either Brooklyn, LA Clippers, or the New York Knicks, and he will win an NBA championship with them and bring himself into the glory days of being one of the greatest players in the NBA. No, one of the greatest players of all time. Not top twenty like he is right now. Not top fifteen or ten. But top not top five either. Not not even top three. He will become the greatest player to ever play the game of basketball when it's all said and done if he makes the right decision in the free agency. Trust me, leaving Golden State times LeBron James with three championships and he'll only be able to add on because he's younger. Scary things are ahead. Well, as I said though, he is out game one and two. But he did travel with him to Toronto. He's probably scouting it a little bit, you know. But Boogie is active for game one. Didn't play his best, but what do you expect? He has to get minutes under his belt again. But I talked about... Fifth Man Fleet being the X Factor for the Toronto Raptors. Golden Sales has a big time X Factor. His name is Alfonso McKinney. Hopefully, you guys know his name by now. No one really knew him. Came out of high school, I don't believe a single D1 offer. Went to community college. Then went to go play some D1 basketball. Went to the G League, went overseas, was bouncing around. I knew he was playing in Mexico. Went to the Toronto Raptors, got cut. Went to Golden State. Walked, he, was in, he was on the practice squad in the beginning of the year, in the, or in the beginning of the preseason, just preseason roster. But look what he's done now. Listen to this stat. Opponents are shooting 31.4% when guarded by McKinney. That's crazy. You're shooting 31.4%. All the players he's guarded, he's guarded all kinds of players. That's what they're shooting when Alfonso McKinney guards them. And don't, don't you dare tell me he's not the X Factor. Draymond's key. He used to be an X Factor, but he is key to the team that's even winning games. Clay Thompson, same as thing. Steph Curry, same thing. Boogie, it, we'll see what happens there. Iggy Dollar, he could be key. But when they win games, when McKinney plays at this level. Also, it's become more and more likely that Andre Iguodala, in fact, will be retiring, which is upsetting, sad. Hopefully, it's not this year. Hopefully, we'll play at least one more. But Iggy Dollar's time in the NBA looks like it might just be coming to an end, everyone. So, with that being said, though, Golden State will be the NBA Finals champions, champions as I've said. I know I've doubted Toronto for three straight series, but I'm once again doing it. Toronto will not win the NBA Finals. It will be in Golden State's hands once again. Who's the top 15 players playing in the NBA Finals? You guys can all go and watch for the next series. Well, 
Stay tuned to find out who I think are the top 15 players and why. Coming up next on Shoes Views. Alright everyone, I'm sure there might be some debates, but I don't care. Recently on Twitter, I've seen some people saying Steph Curry might just be the greatest player in the NBA. He's a great player. Top 5 probably now. Number 1, no. He's not even the number 1 player in the series because number 1 is Kawhi Leonard. Now, before I go any further, Kevin Durant's the best player in the NBA. I've already stated that many times. He, I'm not counting him because I don't expect him playing. Nor am I counting OG on Anubi. Also, I'm not including DeMarcus Cousins. Yes, he will be playing, but I do not know what level he's playing at since we have not seen him for a couple months now. And he wasn't at his highest level at that point yet. So with that being said, we're going with everyone else, though. So yes, Kawhi Leonard's number one. The way he's played, the way he's leading his team, undeniably, he's the best player in the NBA Finals right now. Number two is Steph Curry. I'm not debating that one. Steph Curry's been exceptional, too. Absolutely fantastic. But number three is where the debate will probably occur. Klay Thompson's not my number three. Mm-mm. Draymond Green. Draymond Green, as I'm going to said multiple times now, Draymond Green is the defensive anchor and the leader of the Golden State Warriors, and there's no debate, there's no anything about that. Show respect to Draymond Green. Yeah, go argue with Drake. I'm fine. Do you be you, and you keep playing your way, Draymond. Be the leader of your team, that's what you do. But number four is Klay Thompson, in fact. Great shooter, great player, but I think, in my opinion, Klay Thompson, some people say he's underrated. I say he's a little overrated at times. I'm not sure to what degree or level he will play at if he becomes the second guy on another team, besides maybe playing with Giannis. But if you say maybe team up with someone like Kemba, something like that, I'm not sure to what level that will be at. Point is, I say number four. Number five, Pascal Siakam. Pascal Siakam. And someone has my respect. As the players going on, I thought Bleach Report was ridiculous for ranking as high as he is. Was D'Angelo still better than him? Yes, I'm not debating that. Ridiculous, sir. Mayo, is he still a little hot too high? Yes. The rest of that thing was still ridiculous, by the way. But Pascal Siakam, he's the fifth best player in the finals, and he's spectacular. He's the second best player in Toronto. No ifs, ands, or buts. And as I said, he will be getting probably getting earning a max contract extension in the summer, but will at least be getting 120, which I think is a reasonable place. 90 to 120 for him. Kyle Lowry's number six bothered me because he's so on and off. Him and Marcus Locke need to be interchanged. But I will put him at number six along with Marcus Locke at number seven. Marcus Locke did play great 20 points. Kyle Lowry struggled the first game, but still, that's the way I'm putting it. Iggy Dollar's number eight. He might be beat up. He didn't play so well last night. But, Iggy Doll is a very great player that was playing at a very high level majority of these playoffs, especially ever since Kevin Durant went down. Number 9 is someone that's been a little disappointing, so Jai Baca. Baca's been a great player, but his value has gone down tremendously, as I don't know what happened. Ever since he's been, he was having one of his best seasons in the entire NBA until the playoffs and until he got moved to his bench. He doesn't know how to take a bench run. I don't expect him staying next year. He'll probably be traded unless Marcus Saul leaves as well. Now, 10-11, I could very well switch this. Danny Green is on my respect, and I love Danny Green for so many reasons, but he didn't earn my respect this playoffs. He actually has lost some. He has not been the, Dan- the Danny Green that we know, the lights out shooter. He hasn't really been shooting at all. He doesn't even have too many games above 10 points. Alfonso McKinney, like I said, he's been the best defender in the playoffs, at least one of them. Absolute tremendous underdog, and you might just be able to play him over Danny Green, but I'm putting the Green because of experience, because they're just talent right there. Norman Powell's been exceptional. I guess he struggled last night. Maybe he's bad a little bit of injury. That's why Patrick McCaw got some run. But Powell, he's been absolutely phenomenal and a huge player for the Toronto Raptors. Same as Fred Van Vliet, which I could put Van Vliet higher because of the way he's been playing. But we'll see. Norman Powell and him have both been fabulous. Kevon Looney is 14. Absolute stud. He's been perfect in finding his role. And if McCaw would have stayed, he would have had the same kind of role as Looney. A very good bench role, which I don't know why McCaw turned it down. Not much better the situation he's at right now. Jordan Bell, he's starting for them now. Fabulous last series. Excited to see where Jordan Bell continues to develop. I love Jordan Bell a ton. And excited, like I said, to see where he goes. And I think he will have a big impact if Golden State can be able to come out and win this series. But we will have to see. But that, in fact, is my top 15 players playing in the NBA Finals this year. So, how they live up to it? Only one way to find out. Check out how the rest of the Finals go. Coming up next, obviously, it's going to be a great NBA Finals, everyone. What went down last night in Game 1? Well, stay tuned. I got all the stats, all the stuff you need to know what my thoughts were on the crazy Game 1 that went down in Toronto the other night. Crazy, and you're not going to miss what I have to say. Alright, everyone. So, last night, the very first game of the NBA Finals went down. Toronto won 118-109. to 
It was a great game. But Toronto won. That might be a shocker. It was at Toronto, which is a huge thing. A huge start. Obviously, we know Drake and all that Jurassic Park brings it hold. But let me tell you something. Vasco Siakam went off. Yes, it's Kawhi Leonard's team, man. It would not be disputed whatsoever. Pascal Siakam dropped 32 points on 8-5. and five. In my opinion, he will be getting the max this summer. Do I think he deserves it? I think he deserves a good contract. I think he's a good range around 120. But I believe they will pay him the max, which might hurt them in the future. But on the other hand, Kawhi did play incredible as well. 23-8-8. Eight and eight. Mark Saul showed up big time with a 27 game. Danny Green finally did something well. He had 11 points. Fred Van Vliet continued to just dominate and with 15 points. And Baco was disappointing, 5 points, and he has truly hurt his value coming up this season. As for Kyle Lowry, it's 7, 8, and 9. Not too bad, but wasn't the best. If they, if they were able to win a game, though, with him playing at that level, things are really scary for these two Golden State Warriors. They had Steph Curry put up 34, 5, and 5. Klay Thompson had 21, and 5. Draymond had another triple-double with 10s across the board. Big-time game for him. Iggy Dostro was 6, 6, and 7. Jordan Bell got the start. Excited to see him dominate. I love Jordan Bell as a player. He's a great person, great player as well. Boogie did return. He only had 8 minutes of action with 3 points, 2 assists, and 2 steals, 0 for 2 shooting. Big things are going to keep developing, and I cannot wait for this final to see what goes down. The finals are truly something great and something special. But that was Game 1, and big things are coming, and I'm excited to see what happens. Game 2 is coming up next. Shoe Zone, coming up next, you're not going to miss what I have to say, and I talk about two very interesting facts in regards to the NBA Finals, you're not going to miss it, I saw these stats, the media did not bring it up enough, so, of course, it's got to go down in the fan favorite Shoe Zone, stay tuned to see what I have to say about them. Alright, Shaquille O'Neal, top 10 player, right, I think we can all admit to that, well, let me tell you something, this might change your thoughts on him, in a very good way. In my opinion, this is something fascinating. Yes, he plays a lot of teams. But listen to this stat. Shaq has now had a teammate make the finals ever since 1984. Dan Green was once his teammate, therefore extending the streak. Just think about that for a second. That is insane. That is 35 years that Shaq has had a teammate, one of his teammates, being in the NBA Finals. I don't know if there's a streak much like that. Absolutely phenomenal and incredible. That's insane. You can say whatever excuse you want from playing so many teams, but that's insane. And that is absolutely astonishing. Something crazy now. Out of all the NBA finals in NBA history, there's been 72. 57 of them have been coached by these five coaches. Now, for a quick percentage fact, there's 79.2%. So basically, 80% of the NBA finals have been coached by one of these five men. Steve Kerr, Greg Popovich, Pat Riley, Phil Jackson, John Kunla, and Red Arabach. Absolutely incredible. Those are dynasties. Those are the guys that have formed the dynasties and the legacies of these teams that you see today. Such as the Warriors, the Spurs, the Lakers, the Celtics, so on. It is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And these are the men you have to you can thank. For making these dynasties in a good way and a bad way. But they are some of the greatest coaches ever. 80%. Only 20% are not involved with coaches. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Only about 15 NBA Finals have not involved one of them. I mean, that's just incredible. There's not much you can say about that. So, without further ado, give credit and props to these coaches. Yeah, they might have great teams. Yeah, they have great players. But coaches deserve all the props in the world. So... They have my respect. Steve Kerr, Mom, I don't know. We'll see what he does without the superstars. But as right now, you can't dispute it. He has five NBA Finals now. He's going for a three-peat, four out of five. Absolutely incredible. And they've more than earned my respect. With that being said, that is Shoe Zone, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Shoe Zone. Get ready to get it. No, always, Shoe Zone will be involved in the end of every episode where I recap things that the media just did not hit up enough. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining me today on Shoes Views Episode 15. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. I hope you guys can stay tuned for the rest of this Powerhouse series. It's going to be great as there are three more special guests that I cannot wait for you guys to hear from. With that being said, please 
make sure to go and comment, like, subscribe, whatever it is so you guys can stay in touch and in tune with the podcast. Also, if you guys want to know more details about the podcast, upcoming news, updates, possible guests, my new show coming out, or so many other things, you might want to go and check out my Instagram or Twitter, at Zach Shoemaker. Go follow it. Go check out what I got saying. I'm going to give up updates all the time that you're not going to want to miss. Along with that, you can also go subscribe to my YouTube channel, at Shoes View Zach Shoemaker, or my Facebook page. Like it, at Shoes View Zach Shoemaker. It's going to be great. You're not going to want to miss it. Also, if you guys heard the messages before, go check out voice messages. You're not going to want to miss it because... If you want your voice to be heard on an episode of She's Views, and it's not just through an interview, go send a voice message. Voice messages, you guys can address anything. Uh, if it qualifies for the video, I'll go and put it in the video, and I'll answer it for you guys. It could be anything from possibly a high school question, a college, MBA. I'll answer it. I'll get to it. You're not going to miss it. Go send me a voice message right now if I were you. Well, with that being said, everyone, don't forget... Shoe Views is now being programmed every Monday and Friday. So in a couple of days, get ready for my weekend recap as I'm going to talk about stuff, especially pertaining to these Houston Rockets and what's going on out there as crazy stuff's been going down. But with that being said, everyone, that's it for Shoe Views episode 15. I hope you guys all loved it. Shoes is out. Don't forget to be the light of God. And God bless.